Okay. Notice it doesn't do anything. It just waits on that little screen. All right. So now once we run client, let's see what happens. All right. So look at what we have there. We got a response. Hello server on the server class. All right. So now we got a response. Uh, let's say we want to let the client know that we got the response. So you just just make a print stream again. Service socket print stream abbreviated. Don't get confused. And get the output stream from the socket SSXF. Just right there. Just grabbing it. And you want to. What are we doing here? All right. Dot print line. And we'll just say we got something. Okay, so obviously, you're not going to put this block of code above the buffer. You have to strategically place the code throughout. So, let's say you don't want to send anything if nothing's been sent. Let's just do an if statement. If temp does not equal no let's block that out all right so all that's saying if temp right there which is the read line of the buffer if that has nothing in it do not display anything but if temp does have something in it then go ahead and give the response. Alright, so let's try to run this now. Server first. Always do server. Nothing happened again. The reason was, we did print something from the server to the client. But guess what? The client did not have the code to even get it through the stream. It's not even assigned to a variable, so we need to make a buffered reader here. And the variables are the same as a server class because they're not even joined together. New buffered reader. new input stream reader my skt dot get input stream it's hard it's a little hard to actually it's not hard it's just confusing at first but after practice you'll get used to it so now once we created the buffer let's make some magic string temp equals my boyfriend it's actually my buffer I don't even know why I named it like that it's supposed to be br my buffered reader alright dot read line all it's doing is reading the line of the buffered reader the buffer reader just receives information and it holds it. Alright. And there might be many, many lines in the buffer reader, but we're only sending one line. So that's all we want to display. System dot out dot print line temp. You can do if else statements, you can use this pretty much anything. Server authentication, 
stuff like that. If you want to do logons, it's really neat to use. So let's run it one last time. Server first. And look at that. We got something there. Alright, that's cool. Everything's good. Source code's gonna be in the description. It's gonna be a download link for that. As well as the classes that we use for this. So I hope you liked it. I hope it wasn't too hard for you to understand. My buffer, the buffered reader, you might want to look into some more. Because you can actually use this for files as well. So you have to put in certain parameters for it. can be used for many things. All of these classes can be used for different things.